In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Everything is black and white, easily slotted into place and sorted out. There are no questions, ambiguities, or not totally satisfactory solutions. Have you ever found life like that? I haven't. What I have found is that people are complicated, wonderful, infuriating, loving, unpredictable and beautiful, to name but a few reactions and experiences. Judas Iscariot always gets under my skin during Holy Week. In 2018, when I was thinking about this whilst cooking, or more likely incinerating something, in the friary kitchen for supper, it came to me why. Judas Iscariot is like a mirror. The tragedy of Judas Iscariot is your tragedy and mine. It is because he couldn't be vulnerable enough to trust, and the realisation of that broke his heart so badly he was driven in his sadness and despair to take his own life. His actions are not the typical and simple actions of a thief. After all, why would he have done that for the years of Jesus' ministry and lived as a disciple with all the hardships an itinerant lifestyle could involve? He doesn't seem to have been a man who stood out from the crowd with unusual behaviour in those three years. Not being vulnerable enough to trust often happens because of past hurts and disappointments, but also because the person who has been invested in isn't the person we wanted them to be. One of the greatest heresies and failings is when we make God in our own image and forget that he is a God who saves through grace and not through our own constructions and fantasies about him. We must be very clear on that. The God who we love and serve is the God of Scripture, the God of the God who is the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ and our Lord Jesus Christ himself. We cannot make them in any other image than what is presented to us by Holy Scripture and by the teachings of the Church. I remember as a kid growing up in church, one lady solemnly telling me that she wouldn't die before the Lord Jesus returned to earth. She died of cancer in 2010. The rapture hadn't happened. And now, 20 years later, I wonder if she said those things because she couldn't deal with the death of a husband she had been utterly devoted to and didn't feel able to express how much grief she had because somehow that would undermine her faith in God. That's a very poor teaching in some sections of the church that people are not allowed to grieve. Grief is part of us. Grief is a very human and very natural expression. Yes, we may strongly believe that we will see that person again in heaven or wherever, but we can also be sad about the fact that they are no longer with us and express that through grief. That's absolutely essential and healthy. Perhaps Jesus had disappointed Judas because he hadn't sorted the world out, not got rid of the grinding injustices of life under Roman occupation, He'd said they needed to love one another and forgive their enemies. In my past, I can see in my own experiences and failures times when I've made God into who I wanted him to be and not been open to the possibility that he is always inviting us to trust in him. One of the greatest freedoms and gifts I've been given as a friar is realising through trying to pray for these years that it's okay to be wrong that failure is a gift, it's an opportunity, it's a way to lead, be led back to grace and to allow ourselves to be made vulnerable and new because of mistakes and failures. Don't disregard them as something that shouldn't happen. They're very important. As we face up to the fear that threatens to engulf our world and everything we hold dear, now is the time, brothers and sisters, to say yes to him. That can be with a very ragged commitment and very frail faith. It's okay to doubt. It's grit in the oyster that makes the pearl of faith. St. Clair of Assisi wrote to her sister Agnes of the Lord Jesus, her spouse, and said, Totally love him, who gave himself totally for your love. 
That's the challenge and the true pilgrimage of the human heart, where all life begins in the life and death of Jesus. Judas couldn't see that. Don't let that be your tragedy. Our vulnerable trust keeps us together as a fellowship, as a communion made one in the body of Christ. If we're going to walk on water, we need to be prepared to get our feet wet and say, yes, Lord, I believe. And when that's hard, to trust enough to give it one more try. It's always worth giving it one more try. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.